Hello guys, as we promised, this is going to be the video with examples. We're going to show the real examples. What should we check when doing the UI testing? This time we will show it manually and when we get to the automation part where we have API and UI automation, there we will cover that part where we can show you the tools that can be used for automation UI tests and how to make them. Now um, let's take the random website and try to point out as many examples as we can think of when talking about the UI testing checklist. But before starting, the most important thing to mention is that all these things that we are about to check, we are supposed to check them against some requirements that are received from the client side. When developing the software, we must think of few sides of the team or the software. The front end, back end, and of course their integration. Back end stuff is developed based on the needs of the project of the processes, requests, and stuff like that, uh, based off on the functionalities they must support. And front-end is developed based, of course, on the same needs in the background, but based on what the user sees. And that is the user interface for which the team is developing the software. So we must have the designs for that. We must have specific requirements that we can check against. Besides the designs, we must have other requirements regard regarding the flows of specific actions, some kind of restrictions, some properties, some specific properties like fonts and styles and specific stuff like that, that cannot be really read with your own bare eye just looking at the design. You cannot guess the font, right? You have to you have to have that as a requirement. So uh, what I'm trying to say that is tester is not testing the UI by saying, well, this is ugly or I don't like this. Uh, why is this element not higher or why is it not brighter? But he is comparing the values of the properties with the values provided in the requirements, of course tester has a right to say if he thinks that something is not that user friendly, if he can suggest some improvement or he can even note something that the designers missed out while creating the designs. That is all valid. And usually designers do miss out uh, flows and, and some unpredictable scenarios. They usually just cover the happy path. So let's begin with our examples. What can we check? So we're basically checking anything that we can see on the user interface. What did we say in the previous video? We're checking the fields, the buttons, the links, the drop downs, the general view, the feeling, the user experience while using the application. We took some random demo orange HRM and we're going to try to think of as many uh, as possible examples for you to see, to really feel like, to see what should you do when somebody says, okay, we should do the UI testing for this application. One of the things are alignments. Of course, as I said, you're go you would have to have the design of this page. This would be some kind of a login page. You would have to have the design to see what is the position of this logo and position of this, of this form for username and password. And one of the things that we're going to try to, try to um, see first, we're going to do, we're going to do the right click and inspect. And I'm going to show you how to check the alignments. So, for example, what would we do? We would check if these two fields are properly aligned one with another and with the 
the login button and with this link, of course, if it is aligned on the design. So what we're doing, we're doing this, and this is a Firefox, Firefox browser, but of course the same thing you can do in all other browsers. So you can basically just go all around the UI and you will see all, all these borders and stuff. And in this way, you can see that these are all aligned. So this field, username, password, login, and this link are all aligned on the left side, for example. Then imagine just for a second that this aren't uh, really given the username and password. That's something that you're never going to see. This is just because of it's an uh, application for practice and testing and stuff like that. So it's given an admin and password so you can really log in and, and, and uh, experience the full software on your own. So that's one thing, for example, alignment. What else? Next thing you can do is try the validation messages. So usually, I mean not usually, always, username and password should be mandatory, should be required in order for user to log in. What do we do first thing when we try to test some application? We try uh, if we can log in without providing username or password or not username, not even password. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to click login. What did I get here? It says the username cannot be empty. So it gave me some kind of a validation message for this, for this field. You may notice that there is no label for these fields, like for username and password, but Probably in this case, the designers made up their minds that instead of the labels, they will just put the icons like username, some kind of a man here with his head, and a password like this keychain. Uh, but usually, so if that's in the design, you would have to check those icons too. Are they proper? Uh, do they have the proper dimensions, color, icons, exactly what do they put in, in design, and, and etc. So let's go back uh, on the thing that I'm trying to explain. So validations. I got the validation for the username. Username cannot be empty. Okay, let's try to fulfill username, some random dummy username. It will say password now cannot be empty. Okay, let me type in some random password. What will it then say? it this will this is a browser thing it will uh, ask me do you want this to save this i'm gonna say don't save but i got another validation message and that is invalid credentials so all of these that are listed right now username password invalid credentials those all must be stated somewhere and you must uh you must check them if they're present in the valid cases. So this, for example, you have to check if this validation message is really showing when I, when you type in the wrong username or wrong password or both wrong username and both password. So this has to happen. That, that's like four cases. Then try it for a username, single username, then for a password. And uh, of course, sometimes it uh, actually, yeah, well, it, it depends on the on the design. Uh, sometimes you will see when you don't fill in anything and you click on login, uh, both username and password validation messages would be displayed under the fields. That's the most common thing that you're going to see in the applications. But OK, the designers decided that it's going to be like this. Uh, what can we see here that the validation message is uh, has a certain color and it's not really good fit in in, in this whole uh, form because it is right next to the right side. It looks ugly, right? It should be a little bit moved to the left side, for example. But 
of course, if it's like that on the design, either it's a design mistake or they really, really like that, which should, probably wouldn't be the case. So we check the validation messages. Uh, when you're checking validation messages, it's not, it's not just that you're checking that they're present, you're checking, of course, their position. Are they here? Are they under the fields above, over? Uh, which is the color of them? Uh, are they spelled correctly? So username cannot be empty. Is it grammarly correct? Is it, you know, stuff like that. So I think this is a really, really great example for you to understand. So it, it is all what you see on this user interface in this browser window. So we tried few few flows. What else do we have here? We have, for example, link. What should we check with links? First of all, we should see if are they visible enough. Uh, do we see them as links? They usually change the color and hover. In this case, as much as I can see, it doesn't really change the color. But of course, it can be all checked with the right click. Uh, but we can see that uh, this pointer is changing. And when we're not hovering over the, the link, we have the arrow. And we hover over the link, we have this little hand. That should be, that's one of the things that should be checked, right? That usual behavior when working with links. If I click on the link, what will happen? For example, how do they make it? They make it to be open inside of the same tab. That might be, of course, new requirement. Should every link be open in the new tab, new window, same window, stuff like that could be also uh, gotten as a requirement. We have uh, more links here. We can check, for, for example, the LinkedIn, are we navigated to the correct page? We can see, yeah, we're in the LinkedIn. So we checked one link. We checked basically the navigation uh, when we have uh, links inside of the web page. Uh, what can we check here? We have a few more elements here. We're going to try to reset the password, but without typing in anything and see what do we get. They're, uh, they're asking here for username of this application. We're going to try to click Reset Fast Password. And what did we get here? Could not find. OK, what was that? That was some kind of a temporary message, a so-called toast message. Those are also should be designed, should be included in the design and should be checked properly. There's a specific, specific way how can you catch them uh, and see the designs, the weight, the height, uh, the height, sorry, uh, the color, the background color of that uh, toast message, the exact, the exact uh, text inside of that. So that's one of the things that also should be checked if such messages exist in our application. Um, what else can we see? Of course, and check uh, the colors of the buttons and the, their behavior when hovering over it. We can see that the background color of this button is changed. We can see it also by doing the inspect as we did before. So uh, what can we see here? So when we do this, you can click this little arrow. And when you do this, you can see that the background color here is green. And now remember that. And now when I hover, you're going to see the different uh, value of this here. You see, it's changing. That's something that you can check also. Uh, what else can I do? We can try to uh, type in some username that it's not valid, it's not existing. Try to reset. And there we got another message. So all of those should be checked. Let's try to see some functionalities. So this password, of course, we're not going to use now that flow, but one of the flows should be done to try to reset the password. And is that successful? But we can try this functionality. If we click cancel, what would we expect? We would expect that we cancel this, whatever we're doing, and to go back to where we came from. 
And that's exactly what happened. We came back to the login page, shall we say. Now let's finally log in into the application using this password and username. Okay, we're successfully logged in. Now we have a bunch of elements that we can check here. Of course, one of the things that we could have checked while we were on the login page was this logo. Maybe I already mentioned it. So the size of it, the, the, the font, what are we using here, the, the colors and stuff like that. This is usually, we can now, of course, inspect it. This is usually an image. Yes, of course, it's an image that we're, we uploaded here. And we can see the width and the height of the image that, that can be checked also. That, that's, that we should get as a requirement, the exact width and exact height of this photo. Okay. We have a bunch of elements here, like this menu and the submenus and this drop downs. What should we, for example, check here? So. There's, there must be a requirement whenever I select, so when I click some of the uh, elements from this main menu, the whole thing here, this line and this tab, shall we say, becomes, for example, uh, orange color. And whenever I just hover over some, it becomes some kind of a gray. So that could be one requirement to be checked and you should check it for each of these elements in this menu and for each drop downs. Now you have a different color of the background in this drop downs. You have the different uh, color of these letters, of course. Uh, let's try to navigate to enter in some of these to see what's what's in there. We navigate it to one of the pages here, one of the many, right? We really got some material to work with here. Um, what can we see here? We have really a lot of details in here we can play with. For example, first thing we can see is that we have an edit button and for all the fields we can see that they are not clickable, they're, they're disabled, they grayed out. Let's try to click on Edit button and you see again, it changes the color on hover. Now, all of a sudden, all the buttons, all the fields are enabled for filling in. So that should be one of the requirements that should be checked. Okay, until I check, until I click on Edit, all the fields should be disabled for editing, not just the input fields, but all kinds of fields like radio buttons, anything you can find here. Okay, let's proceed. That's one of the things that should be like, for example, one test case. Another thing, okay, now I have some kind of a states here. When I click edit, this button doesn't really says any more of edit. Now it states save thing. So edit turns into save. That's one of the things that should be checked also. This button changes the text inside of it. What is the one of the first things that we usually check? Well, required and non-required fields. What you should check is based on your requirements, which one are the required ones. And you should see, is are they really required? So if you had the last name, first name were required, those must be here stated as required with this little star. But not just that. It's not, of course, it's not enough that we just label them somehow. That field really has to follow that rule. So what would I check? I would check if I delete this. I have some kind of a validation. It states that it's required. And what if I try to save it? Well, it doesn't happen anything. So why? Because it's it's uh, made properly. I cannot submit some edits if they're not 
by my rules. I'm submitting empty field for some that was supposed to be required. And of course, we should check that for each of the required fields. We're going to remove this and OK, we have the required. Uh, what should we, uh, as I already said for the validation messages that we saw on the first login page, we should check here, is this position of the message where it should be like on the design? Does it have a, a correct color style? And that can all be seen in here. You can see you can see the font size and 12 pixels, position, static, margins and stuff like that. You have a bunch of these things that you can check just by clicking a right click and, and inspecting that element. All these like CSS properties that uh, are uh, created. Okay, and what do you think? Is it enough just for the ones that are marked as mandatory just to check for them? Are they really mandatory? No, we should check. I mean, we should check for all fields, but you know, let's try to uh, see that, for example, employee ID that's not stated as required, but maybe developers made some kind of a mistake and somehow in the background they made it required. So we're going to try to re-raise this and see if we do receive the same message and we can see that we're not. Okay, let's try to say edit. No, we cannot. So this is properly made and that we should check for each field. Is it required or not? Okay, let's bring this back. Uh, what? else can we try? For example, you see here the first name. This first name is probably this thing above this picture. And we're going to try to see some really, really long name to see how it fits in this part of the uh, frame. For example, Peter, we're just going to copy paste this. For example, okay, we still have this. We can, we can, I mean, we can do whatever you want. We don't have to type anything that makes any sense. We just want to see the limit and how it fits into this size. It says it's successfully saved, but this doesn't really look like a good thing. We can even make it more long. Okay, we have a restriction here and that is a good thing. So they made a restriction. I cannot type in any more characters than this. I'm trying. I'm trying to type over the keyboard, but it's not possible. So they have some kind of restraint. How many characters can I fill in this field? Okay, let's go with this field. Okay, they don't allow any more characters in this. Uh, stuff like that, you're also going to have in their requirements. So they're going to say, OK, maybe for specific fields, maybe for all fields or input fields, OK, the max number of characters will be like, I don't know, 50, 100. I mean, I'm just, you know, guessing some number, but you're going to have that requirement. Let's try with this max number of characters for first name and plus for last name, what we're going to get. OK. They have the limit characters, the limited characters, but they didn't really fit it in here properly. So this would be some kind of a bug. This this text is out of the frame. So, okay, we found a first bug. And for example, that you can check for all the fields. Do we have that character limit? Okay, let's go further. Let's try to see what else can we do for uh, input fields. Of course, we should know uh, which input field receives one kind of data. So for some of them, it's just a string. Never mind what you write in down. For some of them, it's going to be just a number, some kind of an ID, which you have seen right now. There was some kind of a number here, but maybe 
it's not restricted just to numbers, but I'm repeating again that that's something that you must have in the requirement. You just you, you can't just guess. Okay, this is a, this is an ID. This has to be numbers. No, it doesn't really have to be just numbers. It can be a combination of letters and numbers. But you're gonna have to have it in the requirement. I'm gonna check here just you know just to see. Okay, I got another restriction. This is the max number of characters for this field, for example. So, as I said, you can have the restrictions for the characters for in general, like for few, for all fields, or you can have, okay, for full name and la uh, uh, first name and last name, you're going to have the constraint, I don't know, like 20 or 30, and for this, you're going to have just like 10. For example, I mean, I'm not counting right now, but, you know, just guessing. You can have different constraints for the number of car characters per field. Okay, we have this restriction, but what if we entered something that is not allowed? Okay, it is allowed, so there must be a requirement for this, that this is a combination of the letters and the numbers. Of course, maybe they said, okay, this is going to be the combination of letters and numbers, but you cannot put any special characters like this. Something like this, okay? Let's gonna try something like this. Save. Okay, they didn't even make the restriction like that, even though this doesn't make any sense, right? But, you know, requirements are requirements. Let's go further with the fields. So, what did I say? I said that you can try a different uh, type of data for each field. If you know that this license numbers is just a number, you can try to see, okay, if this is going to work. Yes, it's going to work, so it's not just a number, but if it was just a number, there should be or some kind of a validation message when you try to type in, or in the most cases, what is being done that, for example, if this field should not accept numbers, when you try to type in, it's it's not going to be allowed. It's not a, nothing's going to be typed in. That's one of the most common ways that developers choose to make it when something is forbidden. You don't try to you don't like try to type in and type all kind of things, and then he says, "Oh well, we don't really accept these letters. We accept just messages, but uh, the, the numbers." But as I said, it's all about the designs, how the design is made, and what are the requirements. Okay, let's go further. What do we have? We can have input fields, we can have drop downs, we can have radio buttons, we can have check boxes like this. For the radio buttons, what do we have to check? Of course, we can, we should check for each of these elements. We should check the labels. Are they properly uh, written? Is there some a mistake in letters, uh, their font, stuff like that, which all we can see we can see uh, here. Um, okay. And what else? We can, for example, maybe I'll, I'll gonna show you that later. Uh, what did I want to say? I wanted to say about this radio buttons. So, uh, what does it think about the radio buttons? You know that when you have multiple uh, choices, there's only one choice you can select at a time. So when I try to select female instead of male, this should be now the center focus in this one. So that's one of the things that is checked also when testing UI. Now, we have the drop down. Uh, well, uh, what you should check is when you, of course, select some value that the same value is here. And uh, if you can scroll down using your mouse or whatever, uh, usually there is a search when there is uh, a lot of results in the drop downs. But what we can do, if there is a search, then you would check that search too. If the search bar is some term, that all the results that should be as a, uh, that all the results in the drop down are. Uh, having that term inside of their uh, label. Let's go further. 
uh, what ha okay we have a special again special type of field and that receives only the dates that's that special thing that that's really interesting so you have here some kind of a drop downs and I'm gonna say May I'm gonna say 20 2021st I'm gonna say I don't know 18th 18th May and what do I have to check I have to check what did I select is that the date that I entered in of course based on what this data presents you can have restrictions like can the date set in the be set in the future in the past or how many days in the past how many days in the future those are all the things that you must check and of course the layout of this of this calendar it's uh, this is so-called date picker when you have the calendar and it opens and you just pick a date you have to check these is this can we are we able to to navigate so we can go like backwards but we should check if we can go forward right and is is the sequence correct so okay June July August September October so okay all of these things should be checked is this in line is this how is this sorted is this sorted the way it should, should be and also this drop down and stuff like that so okay what else you can check when when uh, during the days can you can you enter you know manually can you enter some stuff that is not allowed for example right now I'm trying to enter some letters and that's the thing that I already mentioned to you the, the way that developers made this is that when you're trying to type something that is not allowed then you, you can't see anything that basically nothing is happening so that's the way they protected this field and that's good and for example if this would have some kind of a constraint that it cannot go in the past or in the future if you would it would either be not selectable here like you cannot select a concrete date or when you select it there would be some kind of a validation message uh, below it or whatever the design states it would be okay and there's a chalk box and we had really really all kind of fields here all kind of elements we we could try so many things and so whenever you need anything you can just do the right click and and see what you're interested in okay let's go on some other page to see some other functionalities uh, what did we see here also we can see that after we do some edits and we click save there's another state when it says it's processing until it goes back to edit again and we had a little uh, again toast message that again has uh, a green color and another text and all of these things should be checked not not just the 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 visual part like the color and the size of that uh, toast message and the text that is signed of it but for example the lasting of, uh, of that message does it does it can it be seen like for three seconds five seconds and stuff like that all of these things I repeat should be stated in the requirements we have here like another drop down okay we also don't have the search here so nothing new to check okay um, another thing we have that's a special thing that's attachments so we can add files here there's already some files in here and you can see the some of their properties like size and type and stuff like that so uh, anytime you add the attachment you should check is that attachment uh, having the correct name that was stated on your computer the correct size the type the date when you uh, uploaded it who is edited by and you can try this edit functionality let's try to see so we have a browse we have uh, some kind of restriction like what it accepts to one up to one megabyte so what you should do you should try to find uh, some file on a computer that uh, has more than one megabyte and see if you're gonna get some kind of uh, again validation message or restriction or you know some way to uh, 
uh, go back and browse for some another proper file that can be uploaded here. Let's try some other page. While uh, uh, seeing these other pages, what I'm checking also is navigation. Is this okay? I select the job from here, okay, and I navigate it to the job page. We're gonna see if there's anything different here that could we mention. It's basically just okay. We he we can see here something new. So I, as a user that is logged in here right now, doesn't really have the permission to do any kinds of edits here. So there's no edit button. And for example, that would be one kind of a test case that you would check, okay, I as such and such user with that permissions when navigating to this particular uh, part of the application, I should not see the edit button, okay, because that's something the user can see. So you're checking the visibility of the button that should not be present, for example. Let's try one more thing, for example, so new records, you can add, of course, this is another tab that you cannot edit as this kind of a user. Um, what can we take else, something, something else? Okay, I mean, we have a lot of types of stuff here. We have, here we have like check boxes. This is generally when you want to select all so you try to select all and check if everything is selected, each record from this page. Um, I don't know. Deselected, of course. Try uh, the sorting. Descending, ascending each each of these columns. Um, try to select one. Try to delete. And then see if it's really deleted. Uh, you have, of course, some kind of the window. Usually, when you're trying to delete something, there should be, uh, or delete, remove, or, or edit some sensitive data, there should be some kind of a pop up confirmation that uh, asks you, are you really sure that you want to do this action? Okay, and then you should check, okay, if I say okay, then it should really do my action. If I do cancel, then it shouldn't do my action. Okay, now you have the message successfully deleted and that you should say you should do the same for add so um basically we tried all kind of stuff here um really all, all kind of stuff and we can talk about this like forever there's so many uh elements here um like all kinds of drop downs, we can, uh, you know, this hovering over the, the, the elements, when should something be enabled, disabled, the navigation, the links, how is the general user experience, can you really, uh, when you log in the first time, are you, are you saying that this is, um, this can be understood easily, that you can navigate, do the action that you want without exploring uh, for two hours, right? So, um, basically, I think, you know, uh, we had here a lot of examples, and I think that they will be useful for you. Uh, now we're just going to switch uh, to the presentation to recap what we have uh, seen here, just so you can see it, like, in theory, what should that be. So, here we can... Uh, recap for a second. What did we see here? So we have checked data type errors. We have tried for uh, one field input field. Uh, is can we like in in a field that receives just dates? Can we enter something else? Can we uh, enter numbers like like letters in the field that accepts just numbers and stuff like that? So concrete data type in the field, in the input field. Then field width, yeah, so you can see it also when you try that inspect. I, I showed you like the width and the height of the elements. You can check them for all buttons, for all input fields and stuff like that. Uh, so th those properties, then we have tried that 
limit of characters uh, do they have the constraint on some field how many characters can we enter navigation like links and, and uh, icons that present links and navigation through the application like when you're entering certain tabs and stuff like that um, progress bars there's something that we weren't able to see in this application because it wasn't an element of it but there's something you can also check so you're testing that uh, when displaying pages or screens that take time to load completely, you can check that, that the progress bar appears uh, to, so we could let the user know that the page is loading, that he's not waiting for nothing, right? Then type ahead, what is that? So that's something uh, we couldn't see in this application also, but I mentioned it when we're talking about the drop-down lists. Uh, if there's a lot of results in the drop downs. It should usually be a search option, so you can type some term and, and uh, have more results than to scroll like uh, 200 results in the drop down, just scroll forever. Uh, and then table scrolling, well, uh, there's something, yeah, we, we couldn't see, but if the website has data tables, I mean, we, we could see the tables, but we couldn't see that scrolling. Um, and if the table extends to the second page, then the user should be able to scroll through all the data while keeping the headers visible in the place. So like when you do the scroll, that the headers, like, uh, like name of the columns, should always be there while, while you're sc scrolling. You just see the results of the second page, right? Uh, menu items that we we showed, we clicked, we hovered, seeing the different uh, uh, coloring of the items that were clicked on, that were hovered on. How do what is the width, the height, the background color of these drop downs, and stuff like that. We have seen the validation messages, validation like when they appear after some action, when you, for example, on the login page, when you click submit, when you click uh, login, and there we had another kind of a validation uh, where we cleared out the required field and then the validation message showed up right away. We didn't have to click like save in order to, to see it. So it's, but as I said, and I'm, I'm saying it again, it's all about the design, how the designs um, say how is going to be the flow of showing things uh, as a sequence of actions and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like, share, subscribe, and... See you in the next video. Goodbye.